Hello mga lods, welcome to this channel Bracing Nifty. My name is Roel. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, share with your friends, comment down below, subscribe to this channel, and turn on that notification bell so that you will get notified every time I posted a new video just for you. Our topic for today is on Central Limit Theorem and Z-score. So, meron tayong tinatawag na Z-test. So, basically, we call the Z-test a Z-test because it utilizes Z-scores or standard deviations. Now, before we dig into Z-test, kailangan muna natin malaman ano itong, or matutunan, ano itong Central Limit Theorem. So, according to Central Limit Theorem, it states that if you have a population with a mean and standard deviation and take sufficiently large random samples, with replacement, then the distribution of the sample means will be approximately normally distributed. So take note that kumukuha tayo ng samples natin as representative in the population randomly with replacement, then yung distribution daw ng sample means will be approximately normally distributed or distribution. So yung mga scores natin from the sample means will have an approximately normally distribution. So, ano itong tinatawag na normally distribution? Kasi nakikita natin kung gaano na didistribute yung ating scores from our sample. So, ano ibig sabihin ng normal distribution? Nagkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag na bell-shaped curve. Kung meron tayong normal distribution, meron din tayong mga distributions na hindi normal or pwede nating tawaging na normal. Paano natin nalalaman na normal siya? bell curve yung ating distribution. Pag non-normal naman, hindi siya bell curve. At natitest nung ating distribution na hindi siya bell curve by determining the values of skewness and kurtosis. Which I think na-discuss nyo na so, sa previous na statistics class nyo. So for central limit theorem, for sufficiently large n mu plus k times standard deviation over square root of n, where k can be 0, 1, 2, or 3. So, himay-himayin natin yung ating symbol nung ating eto, mu plus k times standard deviation over square root of n. So, for k is equal to 0, when k is equal to 0, so this is 0 times standard deviation over square root of n. Now, 0 times standard deviation will give you 0. And for 0 numerator, over any value of the square root of n that will give you 0. So 0 plus the mean will give you the same value for the mean. Wala nagbago. So for k is equal to 1 naman. So 1 times standard deviation over square root of n. So that's just equal to standard deviation over square root of n. Or that is just 1 standard deviation away from the mean. Pag si 2 naman, that is 2 times standard deviation over square root of n, or that is just 2 standard deviation away from the mean. The same with C3. That is 3 standard deviation away from the mean. So according to central limit theorem, sabi dito, na kapag ginuha natin yung areas between 1 positive and negative 1 standard deviation away from the mean, that is approximately 68% of the sample means. Now, nagkakaroon din tayo ng approximately 95 of the percent of the sample means lie in negative and positive 2 standard deviations away from the mean. Then for 3 standard deviations away from the mean, that is from negative 3 standard deviation to positive 3 standard deviations away from the mean, approximately 99% of the sample means nandun. So, kung titignan natin yung ating graph ng ating normal distribution, eto yun. So, nakikita natin ngayon, meron tayong bell-shaped curve, which is asymptotic to the horizontal line. And, mostly, yung ating score nandito, pag sa normal distribution, yung most of the scores lies at the center, at the middle which is nearly equal to the value of the mean. So, kung titignan natin dito sa horizontal line, meron tayong mga symbols dito na mu plus standard deviation over square root of n. Then, on the next one, we have mu plus 2 standard deviation over square root of n. And here, we have plus 3. 
Dito sa kabila naman, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So, etong mga values na ito will denote yung distance ng ating standard deviation away from the mean. So, this is one standard deviation away from the mean on the side, sa right side. This one is two standard deviation away from the mean on right side. Ito naman, three standard deviation away from the mean on the right side. Then ito, negative one standard deviation away from the mean or one standard deviation away from the mean on the left side. So kung titignan natin, yung ating notations, positive yung ating standard deviations dito. Yung distances going to the right and negative naman yung distances natin going to the left. Notations natin ng distance. Okay? So ito ngayon, itong bell-shaped curve na ito, ito yung nandito sa loob is what we called areas under normal curve. Which is, ito yung hinahanap natin na area or proportion or what we called probability kapag nahanap na natin si standard score. So the next one is the standard score which is given by the symbol Z which is equal to mean of the sample minus mean of the population divided by the ratio between the standard deviation of the population over the square root of n. So take note na kapag si mean ng ating sample is mas maliit kaysa doon sa mean ng ating population, nagkakaroon tayo ng negative nito. So if this is smaller than this one, so negative ito, obviously, yung value ng z natin, negative. So si z na negative, nalulocate natin dito, on the left side of mu. Kapag si mean ng ating population is just the same with the value of the mean of the population, pareho sila ng value. So nagkakaroon tayo ng zero. Zero ng numerator. So kapag sinimplify natin, if zero si numerator, eto magiging zero na din. So nagkakaroon tayo, tayo ng value na z which is equal to zero. Ibig sabihin nun na yung mean ng ating sample is just the same with the mean of the population. So nandito siya. So wala siyang distance or zero yung distance niya away from the population mean. Kapag yung ating mean ng ating sample naman is greater than, mas malaki, kaysa doon sa mean ng ating population, nagkakaroon tayo ng positive ito dito. So since positive ito, divided by, since positive naman yung ating standard deviation at positive yung square root ng n, so basically, magkakaroon tayo ng z na positive. So sana lulocate yung positive na z dito naman sa right side ng mu. Okay. So habang lumalaki yung value ng mean ng standard mean nung sample, eto lumalaki yung value ni z which is lumalaki din yung distance nung value na yon nung mean na yon away from the mean or the mu towards right right side. Kapag eto naman si mean is maliit. Habang lumilit ito, ibig sabihin Lumalaki yung value ni Z na negative. Palayo ng palayo yung distance going to the left naman. So matutulungan tayo ngayon ng table para malaman natin kung ano yung mga values ng Z na ito. O ano ibig sabihin ng Z. So for this cumulative distribution function, CDF, of the standard normal curve. Kung titingnan natin, meron tayong Z dito. Meron tayong col first column. Meron tayong first row. Ito yan sa magkarutong yan. So, ibig sabihin nung negative 3.8, para makuha natin yung value niyan for z, which is equal to negative 3.80, ito yun. Pag, nam, pag si z naman natin is negative 3.89, nandito. Sa row, ne, ni, negative 3.8, at sa column ni, 0.09, which is, ang value niya, 0.0001. Kung mapapansin natin dito sa table, meron tayong mga values dito. Meron tayong Z values neto. 
So, papunta tayo doon sa, meron tayong negative, papunta siya sa zero, dito, zero, then going to positive na palaki ulit. Kung titingnan natin yung table, coming from here, 0.0001, then from Z, which is negative 3.80, Compared natin yung values ni positive 3.89, which is 0 0.9999. So, ano ngayon ang ibig sabihin ng mga values na nandito sa table na ito? So, these are the values of or the area under or covered by this particular Z score. So, kung titignan natin, puntahan natin si 0. So, si 0, ibig sabihin ng Z, which is equal to 0, that which is equal to, kung titignan natin dito, ang value niya, 0 0.5. So, take note of that. So, nagkakaroon tayo ng Z na 0 kapag etong mean, the same with the value of mean of the population. So, kung z is equal to 0, nandito siya. Ibig sabihin, yung 0.5, ano yun? Ito yun. Kung meron tayo ditong line from negative 3.8 papuntang 0 na z, ang area na na-cover niya dito sa normal distribution is etong area under normal curve na nasa left. Ito, kalahate ng ating normal curve which is equal to 0 0.5. Yun yung area nito. Yung kalahati naman dito, sa positive side, is equal to 0 0.5 din, or kalahati. Ibig sabihin, that yung area under this normal curve is equal to 1. Ang area nito is equal to 1. So, kapag yung Z mo, is not nasa negative 1.0. Nasa yun? Eto. Negative 1.0. So that is negative 1.00. Which is 0 0.1587 yung value niya. Ang area na no-cover ni negative 1.0 is just 0 0.1587. So kung titignan natin itong table, Ang ibig sabihin ng mga values dito, as with reference to the volume Z na nakuha natin, or standard score, eto yung mga areas. Area ito, na nakover ni Z. So from here, kung yung negative 3.89 natin, habang lumalaki yung value nung Z, papunta dun sa positive, lumalaki din yung area na nakukover niya. So kanina, Pag yung z natin from negative papunta doon sa z which is equal to 0, nang nakocover niya 0.5 of the whole area. While nag increase yung ating z, nagiging positive 1, 2, 3, hanggang doon sa dulo kanina sa table which is 3.89, nakocover niya yung 0.9999 nung area which is almost all areas under this normal curve so nagi which is approximately going to 1 so yun yung ibig sabihin ng mga values dito sa table na ito